Good morning. Good morning, everybody. What's happening? Woo. How's everyone How are doing? you today, Chad? I'm good. I'm good. I, uh, you know, had a good, good night of sleep. I went for an early walk with Maya, like we always do. Uh, we just got back from California, where where you live in Rome. Uh, yeah. Last week had a good week where um, did a lot of filming, you know, and got to. Uh, the, the intention behind the filming was to tell more of our story and how we got started and what our mission is and you know what we're doing, who we're helping, and how we're doing it. And it was a lot of fun. It was it was fun to t sort of tell that story. It took me back to uh, really just how far we've come, you know. Uh, and like I went back, like the, the person we were working with asked us to go back and find old blog articles and videos and creatives, you know. So I went back to like 2011, 2012, and I was looking at old videos of me when I was just getting started. And I used to I used to be so nervous on video. And I'm even still, like, I get that. But I was really nervous back then, you know, just getting started. And uh, a lot of the writing that I used to do, and, and yeah, we used to have nobody on Facebook, you know? Like, there was not, not a big audience. And now, on our public page, we have, like, 1.3 million people, 20,000 in the private group. And it's just, it was, it was fun to see the impact of change, you know? Uh, because that was the whole reason why I got into this, why why Brenda got into natural health and how we met up with, you know, our business partners, Scott and Chris, and formed an amazing team. Um, you know, it's 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 pretty fascinating. Um for those that don't know, kind of the reason one of the one of the issues that I started to see early on in healthcare was uh, a failure to get to the root of our, our health issues. You know, so for instance, when I was a physical therapist uh, and an intern, my first internship was in Houston, Texas at this hospital that was world renowned for its treatment in heart disease. And I would I would treat people after they had heart surgery and they would ask to be taken down to McDonald's, which was on the second floor of this hospital. And it just it was I didn't know much about nutrition at that time, but it felt really kind of kind of off. It felt really icky to me, you know, and I would go down there and there would be nurses and doctors and people in white coats. And I was like, what's going on? Um, and then when I got to outpatient physical therapy, I, you know, during in physical therapy school, I learned a lot about physical body, pain, why we have pain. It's largely, largely due to poor positions and, you know, uh, musculoskeletal imbalances. But the nice thing about a physical therapist is they get to spend, you know, a whole hour with the patients a lot, and, and multiple visits. So you get to have conversations with them and understand their history and, uh, what they were doing about their pain and their beliefs about their pain. And, and I started to realize that they, they were treating symptoms in that way too, like, you know, pain pills and prescription drugs and not really getting to the root of the issue, you yeah. know? And like when the, when the root of the issue is not addressed, it, it leads to more problems. You know, it's kind of like the foundation of a house when the foundation is not strong, all above structures are unstable. And uh, not long after that, I started doing home health physical therapy where I would go into people's homes with, you know, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's, and really got to see the environment that people were living in. And as I was going ar driving around to treat people, I would just listen to podcasts and audiobooks nonstop about health and, and particularly ancestral health, how our ancestors weren't dealing with these things. You know, these are largely new diseases. The first uh, heart attack recorded in this country in America was in 1916, you know, and even around 1940s, uh, heart attacks were extremely low, you know, yeah. and it's, and, and now it's the number one cause of death in this country. One in two of us die of heart disease. And yeah. what's changed dramatically is our food, you know? So I became very passionate about food and trying to learn as much as I can about it in the same way that I, I became fascinated about movement and the human body and exercise when I was a physical therapist. So it really changed my perspective that much of the health challenges we face are, are more so due to our environment rather than our, our genetics, you know? And if we change some basic things around our environment, starting with our food and how we move and, you know, taking care of our sleep and our stress, then a lot of big things change. And, you know, we started, I met, I met up with Chris and we, we formed a, a blog and we started posting on Facebook. I would literally post on Facebook at, about health as I would go in to treat people with like heart disease. And, and, and I would go into those, those homes and I would see nothing but processed and refined foods. I saw some really tough things, like especially when it came to treating some of the patients on Medicaid, 
you know, people who, who uh, are, are low income, you know, can't afford, you know, normal, normal insurance um, situations where I'd go in to treat a child and the child would be obese as a, as a child and, and needing like all kinds of medications to keep them going. And, and mom and dad would be on electric wheelchairs. And then I'd see the food they were eating was nothing but like cereal and pink milk. And then a, an obese doctor would come in or a nurse would come in and inject them with like insulin and all these things. And I was just like, what's going on, you know? And then hearing uh, all kinds of arguments around healthcare, like should healthcare be private or public or how, how does that work? And like, we're not even getting close to the root issue here. Yeah. Like we need to be having more conversations around food. So all of that, that experience uh, put inside of me and Brenda and, and really in, and everybody that we came in contact with forming this business around uh, and this company around uh, creating a way for people to take responsibility for their own health through education and programs to empower them. So that's what started the 30 day challenge. And we started getting a lot of traction with that, started getting great results and learned more about uh, getting the word out and, and influencing people to, to join in. And it's just, it's grown into something really special. So to, to see all that, you know, as a physical therapist, like I can't make a change here, and now to to notice the the radical impact we've had is is really special. And I think we've we've got a long way to go to where you know things are good. But it was it was nice to to reflect on that and tell that story for a bit. Oh, I can imagine. I mean, it's so powerful to see one per one at a time the people and the, like the lives that you're changing and the health benefits that they're discovering is amazing. Every single day to hear a new story, see a new photo. I mean, yeah. I can really imagine. You know, from where you started to see now, like, you know, starting off as just a little blog that you're posting to now seeing the numbers, you know, grow and seeing the stories increase is pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I never get tired of the testimonials, you know, they're, they're amazing. But yeah, it's, it's one person at a time. And it's really, uh, that's what's, that's what's so special about, about the testimonials, I think, is when people uh, go through an experience like the 30 day challenge, they improve their, their life, they take responsibility, they, they lose weight, they, you know, they, they get off medications. It, when they do that, and they share that story in very much of a real way, it gives someone else permission to join in and do it. You know, they just they just need to be like, Oh, okay, it's safe to dip my toes in the water here. You know, even though everyone around me might still be eating old foods. And you know, maybe there's lots of negative comments around people around me, like, someone else is, is doing something, they're, they're giving me an example to model off of. And it's very inspiring because I, I think uh, what's, what's potential, what, what can happen as a tipping point, you know, on, on the individual level and on the collective level where, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get past this era of, of disease as a society. And, and that's my hope. And, uh, you know, live a, live a more sustainable, clean life. That's good for us, uh, good for animals, good for the earth, everything, you know, there's complete transformation. So. We're just getting started. Exactly. <laughs> like you said, one step at a time, one person at a time. Yeah. Okay. Always step by step, for yeah. sure. For sure. So, all right. So, yeah, let's dig into today's topic. You know, I, we've been, sometimes we talk a lot about like science y stuff and, you know, hormones and metabolism and toxicity and inflammation and all that stuff. I thought today we could talk more about the practical matters of making this stuff work. And I, I'd love to hear your opinions on some of the things that work for you. And, you know, as we're talking, anybody can ask questions, but, you know, we've been doing this for uh, almost a decade now, eating kind of clean, what I would say. Um, so definitely picked up a lot of tips and work with a lot of people to uh, make this work in the long run, because it has to be sustainable, it has to be affordable, um, and it has to be simple. So I guess we'll start there, is with the kind of the rule of simplicity with eating this way. You know, I think uh, when a lot of people change the way they eat, they make things more complicated than it needs to be. There's a potential for overwhelm to come in. And it's understandable, you know, when when eating is, is so, in our culture has become so simple as going in through a drive through or heating up a pizza in the oven or in the microwave. And all of a sudden, um, we're having to take a few more extra steps to prepare real whole food. Um, how do I cook? What do I do? You know, all these things can be a little overwhelming. And, you know, we try to give people recipes um, and, and meal plans, I think, because that's what assures people that they can have something to eat. And we want to expose you to different ideas and ways of eating. But what's more important is to understand the basic principles. And, you know, 
I'd say 95% of my meals are like following some, some very basic principles of, of uh, what I call the food matrix, right? So the food matrix is, is take a protein. This is the equation, right? Now you hear me say this a million times, but take, take a quality animal-based protein, take a vegetable, take a good quality fat, and take a spice or two spices. And what you've got there is the potential for like a million meals, to be honest with you. So you can take all these different types of proteins. You can take, you know, lamb, uh, bison, beef, chicken, you know, fish. There's so many different types of different fish, turkey, whatever. This, you, can, you can list out like 20 different types of proteins. You can list out 30 different types of vegetables, you know, broccoli, cauliflower, cucumber, spinach, kale, you know, whatever you want. And you can list out all the different types of spices, you know, whatever that is. And different types of fats like coconut oil, uh, butter, ghee, olive oil, you know, all those things. But you can use any combination you want and come up with a simple meal. Then you, you can never eat the same thing twice in a whole year as long as you just obey that simple rule. People always get kind of stuck on, on board or I don't know what to do. And it's just as simple as creating a little bit of variety in that, that very simple equation, you know. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> very simple. I feel like people just make, like you said, make it complicated when it doesn't need to be. It's yeah. It, it's like, and I was gonna give you a great example is um, the other day, like I made a pot roast and I uh. put it in a slow cooker and I let it cook. You know, I, it was very simple. Just do a few chopping of you know potatoes. I sweet potatoes, of course, and then uh, carrots, some onions. Throw it in with some spices and just leave it. Very very simple let it cook for six hours and it just fell apart. So that was an easy yeah. dinner I had. And then, you know, I made enough so there was leftovers. So I can use, next day I made lettuce wraps out of it. And the day after that, I threw some peppers and made fajitas out of it. So like you said, it's just about being creative and taking a meal and just, you know, keep changing and keep adding to it. And you can make some amazing dinners out of it. Yeah, and you said you use the pressure cooker there? I use the slow cooker. Slow cooker, okay. We call those crock pots, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, are crock pots and, and slow cookers the same thing? I don't even know. I want to say they are because I know <laughs> now the instant pot, but I would say slow cookers and instant pot are the same. Yeah, the instant pot seem to be really picking up steam lately. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do that a lot too, and and that's a, another cheap way that you can you can get a big chunk of roast or something. You know, put it in there, uh, let it simmer for like six to eight hours, and you've got enough meat for like a week. You know, yeah, it's incredible. Um, it definitely feeds a family for like two meals um, at least because uh, it's a lot of meat. And that's a really simple way to cook a lot of meat. Um, another thing I do is, uh, you know, we recommend to people is, is if they're living alone or they want to save time is, is like you said, cook enough for uh, another meal or at least maybe two or three more meals and then have that for, you know, lunch or dinner the next within the next three days. And that can save you a lot of time. Uh, one thing I do recommend people if they can is, is to get glass containers. It's always better to store items in glass rather than plastic or Tupperware. Um, most of my meals look pretty simple. They look like ground meat, uh, frozen veggies, and I'll, I'll steam the frozen veggies while I cook ground meat over coconut oil. And I'll, when, it, when it's done, I'll put it in a big bowl, mix the meat and the veggies, and I'll put over some some olive oil with salt and pepper. That that's like how most of my meals look, and it's so simple and it's so cheap. You know, we we get the, we get a big bag of frozen veggies from something like Costco, and it lasts maybe like three weeks. It's it's so big, and it's a mix of like carrots and broccoli and cauliflower, uh, but they have all kinds of different medley veggies that you can choose from in your bags. You know, but you know sometimes I'll use ground chicken, sometimes I use ground turkey. Sometimes I'll do that with eggs, and that's an easy way to do it. Um, I will also do uh, – we, we get a lot of those big salad greens, mm. you know, the, the leafy greens. That's another easy thing you can do is cook your meat. You can cook a chicken breast, um, you know, dice it up or slice it in a chunk in the strips, and then put it over a bed of leafy greens and put over red onions, carrots, some, some nuts and seeds, uh, you know, avocados and uh, like a homemade dressing or some of that primal kitchen dressing. That's an easy, easy way. And those things take like no time. You know, it's so simple. Um, so there's lots of varieties you can do. Do you ever, do you ever try the leafy green salads? I have. I love them. Yeah. yeah. I honestly, I take, I mean, I, I'll get a big bag of like spinach or the, the spring mix or the leafy greens and I'll just throw whatever on it. I, 
I'm obsessed with sales. I can never get old. Like they never get boring to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it, you can you can choose choose a different salad dressing, and it's a completely different experience. You know, so there's tons of salad dressings out there. You can I mean you can Google paleo salad dressing and get a ton of ideas. You know, we have some on our blog. Uh, but the, I, I really like the Primal Kitchen stuff. That seems to save me a lot of time. They have like honey mustard and ranch and Greek, all kinds of things, and none of them have any bad fats or sugar or anything like that. So they're great. Um, so that's a that's an easy way to do it. Um, you know, and, and particularly and usually the the fancy recipes, the stuff that takes a lot of time in the kitchen, we'll, we'll save those for for more like sit down dinners. You know. Uh, when we have time and we want to put on some music and kind of just be in the kitchen and, and cook together, which is great. But most of the time they're super simple, like what we discussed there and kind of just using that food matrix, protein, good quality fats, lots of vegetables and some spices, you know. Now you brought up frozen veggies. I know that gets brought up once in a while. Is there a benefit to eating fresh over frozen or is yeah. that some of the cup like comments that do come up with the members? Yeah. So the benefit is actually in the frozen veggies as long as long as it's organic. But the reason why is because it's it's more dense in nutrition. So because it's it's fresher when you think about it. So it was picked from the ground and immediately frozen, right? So as opposed to so the, so those nutrients stay in the vegetables as opposed to something that was picked, stayed at room temperature, and then degrades over time. And then, you know, a week later or three days later, it comes to your, your house. That, that time where it decomposes a little bit, it loses a little bit of nutrition and freshness. So frozen veggies are actually more nutritious. They have more vitamins and minerals in them. So you can save some money. You can also save some time. Um, speaking of frozen stuff, something I recommend for everybody if they have room yeah. is to get an external freezer unit if you can. Like if you've got a big family of four or five people, uh, that's something we have that um, it costs, I think it costs like maybe 120 bucks at Home Depot or Costco. Okay. Um, but we'll go ahead and like when we go to the farmer's market or something like that, or we also order from ButcherBox. So we get a, a bunch of meat that comes in, but we can't store it all in our refrigerator here with the freezer. So we just put it all in the external unit. And, you know, we get frozen veggies, frozen meats, frozen, Brenda does a lot of smoothies. So she does a lot of frozen fruits that so we store it all in there. And uh, that's a, that's an easy way for us to go shopping like once a week and in the long run save a lot of money, especially when you buy in bulk. Like if you're going to Costco or you're making a deal with a farmer at the farmer's market and you're, you're buying, you know, half a cow or something like that, you can, you can save a lot of money. So those are easy, easy, easy things to do. Yes. I like it. Cause I always do that. And then something's on sale, I like to stock up on it. So then you get certain veggies or meat like that are great prices and then you can keep it in your freezer and have it for later. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, yeah, those are my those are my big tips. Um, like I said, storing glass containers, um, you can go a long way with all that stuff. And it's, I mean, most of the meals within five minutes of eating. You know, not preparing long at all. Just really, really, really simple. So, um, never get bored. Doesn't cost a lot of money. Easy cleanup. That's how we do it. And we usually um. Like you said, during the week, just do something simple. And then I'll like spend Sundays doing like meal prep for the week. And I know my sister, she's a teacher. And what she does is mm -hmm. every Sunday, she'll go and prep her meals for the week. And she has all her little glass containers. It's so cute. She'll, she'll line up all her containers for the week and she'll meal prep and send me pictures every Sunday of like she spent maybe an hour and a half max to prep all her meals that she absolutely loves for the week. Because what she does is, wow. you know, it makes it easy for her because being a teacher, she can just take it with her. That way she's not stuck like, mm, I have nothing to eat. Let me just go grab whatever. She always has a nutritious meal with her. So every yeah. week, it's been an hour and a half, and she'll have the whole week prepped and done. So it's it's amazing what meal prepping does and saves you time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, that's a real systematic way of doing it. That's, <laughs> I, I typically don't have a time to like cook for an hour and a half, but if that works for people, that is awesome. I mean, it's it's yeah. really nice when it's all you have to do is just heat it up and you're good to go. So. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, what about eating out? Do you ever, do you ever, uh, you make this work eating out? Is it okay for you? Like, how does it, how's it go? I, I haven't had a problem eating out because I know a lot of people get nervous about it, and I honestly have not had any struggles because you'll find most restaurants will accommodate whatever your requests are. So, if for example, like you go to Chili's and you just want like a fajitas, just don't get the tortillas, don't get the beans and the rice. You can just get the chicken 
with, you know, sliced up veggies is a great option. So I personally don't find it, you know, a challenge to go out to eat. I don't like to go out to eat often because you don't know what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the different sugars and different oils they might use. But I do find it, you know, accommodating that you can go and get it, anything you want at any restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting with eating out. I notice a lot of uh, people feel like they're bothering others when they sort of speak up and say, I don't want to go to McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or something like that, um, which is interesting. I think it's I think it's so important just to speak up and say and just be honest and say, look, I'm. I've just noticed I do not feel well when I when I eat those foods. Is it okay if we go somewhere else? You know, and it's, it's just really as simple as that. Um, and and taking a stand for your health and and being responsible. And it goes back to it's okay that everyone else around you is eating bad foods, but everyone else around you is suffering from these chronic diseases. You know, it's okay if you stand up and say, I, I don't want to do those things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anywhere you go nowadays, especially if it's a kind of a more, I don't know whole food, locally sourced place. I mean, almost everywhere serves meat and vegetables, you know? And the the one challenge I think that you're gonna come up with more than anything else is the, the best fats are not always used at restaurants. You know, a lot of times they use vegetable oil or canola oil, but you know, if, if you're still getting meats and vegetables, then you're doing pretty good. You know, as long as you just make sure that, you know, you're, you're, you're using good fats at home, like olive oil, coconut oil, butter, you know, ghee, all those things that we talk about, then you're fine. As long as you eat most of your meals, even, even if you were traveling and someone who's super busy, you're eating out on the road, you can still make this work. Um, but it's simply saying no to the bread when they bring it to you, no to the crackers, um, no to the croutons and the salad, you know, know that they're going to, you know, let people, a lot of people get stuck with the salad dressings. Right. Um, so that's one thing that you could do is make your own salad dressing or like like I said with that primal kitchen stuff bring that with you and you can get little to go containers too that's a simple thing but just order your salads without croutons without cheese and uh, you're going to be well off but almost any of those places you can on top of that salad order some chicken or some steak or get some meat on the side Um, or you can order you know just some meat and vegetables and that's all you got to do. So those are those are really simple things, but pretty much everywhere you can you can make that work. Are there some places that you like to go to? You know what? I don't have a few favorite places. I just I, I know this is a recommendation. We <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. A recommendation we always tell people too is you can look up the menu as well. Before, yeah, that's another thing that you can do because I know some people really do stress about going out with a group of people. And so, uh, you know, a thing that you can do always before you go is kind of look up the menus so you kind of already have an idea what you want. So you're not sitting there stressing about, oh my gosh, what can I order? Is there anything for me to order? Yes. Uh, but in terms of favorite places, honestly, my favorite thing is just to cook at home. Cause I do, I do go out and I don't have like, it's not anything that's, oh my God, it's amazing. You know, I always feel like I can always cook something better at home. Yeah. I don't, I wouldn't say I have a favorite place I like to go. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you? Well, we live in Austin, so there's some pretty awesome places yeah. here that I don't know if they're they're necessarily everywhere. I mean, the easy place that's probably everywhere is Chipotle. Yeah. Like, um, you know, you can get meat and veggies all day there. The only the only thing is, um, the only veggies they have are really nightshades, so like peppers and eggplant, and not eggplants, but red peppers, green peppers. Um, but you can and, and, and onions. So that, that's what a lot of like Chipotle is. So that's that's an option. We have a place called Picnic here, which is amazing. It's essentially a complete paleo restaurant. Oh, wow. um, yeah, Austin has a lot of really cool local restaurants that are, you know, all the foods locally sourced, gluten free, dairy free, soy free, only awesome. only cooked with good fats. So you can order anything on the menu there, and it's it's all good. Um, we have another place called uh, True Food Kitchen. I don't know if you've been there, mm-hmm. but that's a good place. Um, and uh, Flower Child, yeah, we got all these great little restaurants here in Austin. But even even at the like the chains, like let's say Outback or Chili's, like you mentioned, like all those places have a gluten free menu. All those places have meat and veggies. You know, you can you can make it work for pretty much any one of them. It's always going to work. The places that you're going to get in trouble are the fast food places, yeah. like McDonald's or Wendy's. Those places, yeah, those places are not good, you know, uh, because they they don't really have vegetables. Like, like fries don't count, especially when they're like that. Um, 
you know so you know just being just being mindful and, and not putting yourself in a in a bad position and just being consistent with that you know yeah that is yeah exactly preparing yourself and knowing that you are strong because you don't have to give in that's a huge thing is people like you said they see their friends eating it and they feel like okay I'm gonna get pressure if I don't order a drink or if I don't eat the certain way that my you know friends are, then they feel guilty. So just taking a stance for your health and knowing that it's my body and I want to feel good after I eat it is a, you need that motivation to like just keep you on track when you're going out to eat. Yeah, yeah, it's um the social thing of all the people I've ever coached one on one. The social thing seems to be. Uh, a big part of resistance for most people, whether it's at work, you know, it's Friday, they brought a cake and everyone's eating it. And there's this pressure or, um, you know, it's the holidays and, uh, you know, my, my grandmother made it, made a cake or something. Like, I, I feel like I have to eat or I'll upset people. And I think that has to be switched a little bit and just say like, this is me, this is what I'm doing for me. And I'm, I'm taking action on it and, and not being rude about it. Just saying like, just being real clear, like I'm choosing to to do this because I, I just noticed that th those foods do not make me feel good. And I'm really feeling good. I'm making excellent progress. And the people will be like, oh, well, that's great. Good for you. What, what else are you doing? Yeah. You know, so it's, it's just changing the script a little bit and, uh, and, and taking a stand for your health. That's as simple as that, you know? And I know sometimes there's uh, people within the family, you know, at home who maybe the husband's not on board or the kids still want to eat old foods but it's it's still the same thing it's like you know keep it simple so you can get some progress but take a stand for yourself and just be consistent and what happens when you do that and you make progress is everyone's like what are you doing you know and they start feeling the same and if you've got kids remember you're the one that feeds the kids the kids don't need kid food they need real food exactly you know? and there's there's lots of manufacturers out there that are creating fake foods that are giving it to your kids and your kids are getting allergies and getting sick and getting obese and you, that doesn't that doesn't need to happen either right. you know so it's just it's just a matter of just taking a stand for yourself this is real health insurance you know sure. and so. like you said, like a lot of people say oh my kids are picky eaters it's like well you're training your kid if you keep telling your kid that this yeah. is this is the way you're going to eat or this is what i'm providing you they're going to start eating that they're going to start enjoying it but it's when they have that mindset oh yeah they're picky we'll just keep saying they're picky and only feeding them certain foods so you mm. are right it's what you're feeding them you're in control of that so i yeah. think that's and they're also addicted to sugar. You know, who, who, who's, who's going to turn down ice cream? It tastes so damn good. You know, it's like if you didn't know that ice cream was was in, in large amounts every day is bad for you, you might just eat it all the time because it's so delicious, you know. So, they're, of course, they're going to be picky when food engineers are creating fake foods that design to make you uh, addicted to it and not being able to stop. So, um, yeah, you know. <laughs> Don't do well, those not, things. Not to mention the commercials. They get you with these cute little characters that the kids oh. are like obsessed with how these little cartoons are saying, this is the best thing to eat or you'll have yeah. it if you eat this. So Yeah. Frosted Flakes, Tony the Tiger. God, yes. Yeah, that guy's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no good. No good. Um, let's see. What else we got? Do we have any uh, any exciting questions? We week? do. I have three of them that came through. All right. I'll start the first one from Karen. She says, I understand we are supposed to eat like the cavemen did. Uh, the paleo diet includes lots of veggies. Wasn't agriculture begin long after this era? Yeah, so good question. Um, so first off, I'll say like what we're trying to do is not uh, do everything the caveman did. You know, if that was the case, we'd actually get rid of our air conditioning units and uh, our nice comfortable beds with blankets and we'd go and live outside on the ground for the fire which i've done that that's cool <laughs> um but we're just trying to to learn from them and and mimic that environment as best we can and also know that no matter what we do we'll never have that exact environment because um things change things evolve you know the plants that that what they ate back then are different from the plants that we're eating now and um, same thing with the animals every everything has changed a little bit what we're trying to do is go okay um, our ancestors did not have these modern diseases like we had. What can we learn from that? And can we try it out and see what happens? And what what is present in the in the modern world that wasn't present back then? And uh, you know, if those things include refined sugars, white flour, toxic fats, um, 
you know, these genetically modified grains, um, processed and refined foods everywhere, artificial flavorings, things, things like that. Remove those and we get closer to whole real foods. Um, regarding agriculture, what happened at that point was the was the farming of grains and 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 beans and things like that. And dairy started to be a part of the diet. Um, but plants and vegetables have been around for a long time, you know, hundreds of thousands of years. They, it, it's not, it, it wasn't vegetables that just started to appear when we started to do agriculture. It just, it just became something that we contained in a farming, in, in, in an actual field and started uh, doing it differently. But uh, plants have always been a part of our, our, our food supply along with uh, meat. You could even say that plants were there before meat in many ways, if you go back far enough. Um, but yeah. It's really just the grains and uh, and the dairy that started to come into play once we started um, the farming practices. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. Um, I'll answer number question number two is Ofra. Hi, I'm on the paleo since February and doing great. Awesome job. We love hearing that. Um, <laughs> like to know if there is something that I can do for my varicose veins. Oh yeah, so varicose veins. I. Actually, I saw that question and I, and I looked it up a little bit. So, uh, you know, essentially what's happening with the varicose veins is that the valves within the veins aren't functioning properly. So, and it can be, you know, it can happen for a number of reasons. It can be because of excess weight. It can be because of stagnation, because that, you know, when we're not moving enough, blood is not flowing to a certain area of the body. So that valve can turn off. It can be part of the aging process. Uh, many women who who have pregnancy, you know, because of the pressure of the baby and the extra blood coming through, and then holding that off for a while, that can be a part of it. It can be due to hormonal changes, and it can just be a simple part of uh, genetics. But there's a ton of like natural things that can be done. I know there's, you know, people often end up getting surgeries, but uh, when I saw that question, I I looked it up a little bit, but. Uh, I, I would exhaust all the the natural ways and of yeah. doing this and treating this before getting surgery, but that's just me. But things like grapeseed extracts, pine bark extracts, uh, horse chestnut extracts, butcher's broom extracts, comp comp compression stockings are another thing um, that you can use. Um, you can eat more fiber. You know, we always talk about vegetables, great sources of fiber, things like asparagus, beets, pomegranate. Um, uh, you can eat more tannins. These are things like berries, squash, black tea, nuts, eating more foods with bioflavonoids. So apples, cherries, grapes, blackberries, apricots, uh, eating more foods with bromelain. So pineapple, kiwi, figs, papaya, and generally just staying hydrated. You know, all those things are going to radically help you. Um, there's also other interesting things that you can find online. I'll, I'll see if I can uh, post the video I came across, but doing things like uh, taking the juice of tomatoes and applying it on your skin twice a day for two months or olive oil on your skin twice a day for two months. Those are things that, you know, I'm not too familiar with, but apparently it's getting 20 million likes. So it must be something good or maybe people are just excited about it. Right. Um, but I, I would, I would do those things. I would move more, walk more, um, eat more foods with fiber, um, stay hydrated, and uh, maybe apply some of these topical things and, and see if it changes anything, you know? Good, yeah, because I looked it up too and I saw that it said, try to set an alarm clock for every 30 minutes and just try to get up and move. Like you said, don't try to sit too long. Um, and an additional thing they said, do a lot of leg stretches and stretching different areas. So movement yeah. always is very helpful. Yeah, yeah, movement definitely is a key. Although having said that, I, I, I've known some like outstanding CrossFit world-class athletes who have varicose veins, like women who have them. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's going to be the thing or not, but it's definitely, I mean, everyone's going to benefit from moving. Um, and like you said, the, the easiest rule is just move every 30 minutes and just, you know, to make sure you're getting consistent blood flow. Um, that'd be an easy place to start, but who knows? Maybe it'll go away. Maybe it won't. And just do the best you can. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We have the next one from Ariel. Ariel says, hi, I've been doing paleo since January, and I love the changes in my body, in oh. mind, which is awesome. My greatest challenge is always feeling hungry. I don't like eating too much meat, but vegetables don't fill me up. What are some suggestions for hearty, filling meals for breakfast and dinner? 
Well, the first thing I would I would wonder is if um, she's getting enough fat, you know, because fat's the most satiating macronutrient. So things like avocado, um, you know, I, I never want people to go too crazy on nuts because they're so calorically dense and they are a form of a carbohydrate. But um, if you're eating like macadamia nuts, which is more of a fat, that can be a better a better option, but maybe being a little more liberal with um, the fats that you put over your foods and, and what you cook with. So the coconut oil, the olive oil, the butter, things like that. Um, those are some easy things to help. I'd also wonder if, um, you know, if you don't want to eat more meat, you don't want to eat more veggies. Uh, I would wonder if you're actually um, hydrated enough. A lot of people are are feeling like they're hungry, but they're, they're really just really dehydrated. They're not drinking enough water. And we always recommend, you know, putting a little salt in there so you're absorbing your water. So that would be a thing I would think about. Um, and the other thing, the other thing I always wonder is if people are just, they're really used to the feeling of feeling stuffed. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because a lot of people, when they're eating those refined foods, with a lot of sugar, it's hard to stop eating them. And they, they get a feeling of, of like, I'm full, I'm bloated. Right. And that's not normal. You know, but it, it all, because but because we've been doing it for so long, it's become the normal feeling. Right. So, uh, but normal is not not like that. Normal is 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 feeling a little empty in there. You know what I mean? Uh, so, because because like, most well, yeah. because that that helps you break down your food. You right. know, if if you have a lot of stuff in there, you're never actually absorbing the food and breaking right. it down, and you want to sort of empty it You're like fasting for periods and, and going hungry is good because it improves the resiliency of the cells of your body it improves the ability for you to eliminate toxins and like i mentioned absorb your food yeah. um it, it, it i always go back to that digestive fire thing like if we have too many logs in the furnace like we can't actually light the fire and and many of us aren't like burning down all the wood before we put more in there you know, so it's it's like a it's a good habit, and especially for like aging. You know, if you want to extend your lifespan or improve your immune system or make your skin look better or decrease inflammation, like going longer periods of time without eating is one of the best things that you can do to improve your health. Um, but at first, it's a little uncomfortable, <laughs> you know, because we get cranky <laughs> when we get hungry. Uh, but a lot of this has to do with where we're getting our fuel source, you know, for those of us that are, are more dependent on sugar and carbohydrates as a fuel source, it will be much more difficult because your blood sugar is going up and down all the time. You'll get shaky. Um, so that's why early on, you know, when we're implementing this lifestyle, we want you to focus more on protein and fat because they're the much more satiating foods that the, you know, the balance of blood sugar is more even and you don't have those those hunger cravings. You can go for longer periods of time without eating. It's a lot better, and it's a great way to sort of constantly give yourself a cleanse or a natural reset. And what we notice there is people don't get as as hungry as much. You know, so those are the things that I think about. I would say very careful. Like, ask yourself: Are you really hungry, or are you just like used to being stuffed? You know, and I think that's what's typically going on: is that people are 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 used to being stuffed and overeating. And that's not normal. It just appears to be normal. And uh, make sure you're not dehydrated. You know, yeah, exactly. Those are all great. We did yeah. actually have, while we were talking. There was a question that came up that says, "What are your thoughts on juicing?" Yeah, juicing. So juicing has a lot of benefits. For I mean, there's tons of uh, things out there about like the Gerson method, and uh, you know, there's great documentaries like Fat Sick and Nearly Dead, and the ability to get a lot of vitamins and nutrients in there. But for people coming from the context of a standard American diet, like they're just starting out, I don't necessarily think it's the best thing to do. Um, I think it's the best thing to, you know, eat your food yeah. and uh, and not not uh, condense it into a liquid form. The thing about when you when you juice it, you you uh, you, and you take in these vegetables in liquid form, especially if you're putting in some fruit in there, you're you're getting a big bolus of sugar that gets broken down into the bloodstream very rapidly as glucose. And for someone who's coming from the context of that standard American diet, where they're eating lots of sugar, it, it can't be, sometimes it's not beneficial for them to reset their metabolism and start using fat as a fuel source. You know, you will see cases where, like that documentary, Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead, where someone's coming from that oh, 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 like obese place and they start juicing and they lose weight and they feel better. And it's good, but it's, doesn't necessarily prove that it's it's better, 
yeah. you know, and, and what we're going for is a, is a better, more sustainable way. And like, you know, do you really want to be juicing forever? It takes a lot of time. It costs a lot of money to buy those vegetables. There's a lot of cleanup, yeah. you know, and there's, there's better ways to get those vitamins and minerals. When you eat those foods, you actually still have all the fiber. It's in its natural form. You absorb it better. Um, and it doesn't, doesn't have the, the cost of all that, all that time and money and cleanup. So it just seems to be like an easier way, you know? So, um, early on, I really suggest people minimize the smoothies, minimize the juicing, you know, focus on real whole food, create a new relationship with real whole food for 30 days. And then after those 30 days, if you know, if you're out and you want to have some juice, that's fine. Um, but I typically, I don't think it's, something that people need to do like every day unless they really think think it's going to be working for them um there like i said there are some cases where people who are dealing with cancer it might be a good thing to clear out the lymphatic system you know sometimes for people who uh, are dealing with such a chronic heavy loaded disease like that um, giving yourself a break from protein and fat in some cases can be beneficial but that's things get very individualized when it comes to that stuff so i don't want to give like a specific recommendation um but yeah during during the 30 days if you're just someone who wants to get healthy lose some weight it's not really needed you know i just say eat real food creating a relationship with food and uh, you'll, you'll get more results that way wonderful and we had one more question come up <laughs> all right I, I love the questions that keep popping up what are your thoughts on oil pulling is it beneficial oh yeah so definitely for those who don't know oil pulling is, is taking uh, coconut oil put it in your mouth and then swishing it around for 15, 20 minutes. After a while, you get kind of tired. It's like, gosh, can I keep going? Um, I think, I, I, I don't know what I think about it. I've, I've done it yeah. and, and I, I can't say like I had huge changes. Um, some people swear by it. It was really popular early on. Um, some people say, you know, it improves the health of your gums, that it helps extract a lot of toxins out of your teeth. Um, maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'd say, I'd say try it, look up and then a little more. Um, Brenda used to do it. I used to do it. We don't do it anymore because it just simply kind of takes a long time. There's a lot of time where you're swishing around and you can't talk and I kind of want to get on with my day. Uh, but you know, it, as far as like, is it the least thing that makes the most difference? I don't, I probably don't think so. I think you're better off just flossing your teeth, you know, brushing, getting regular checkups, uh, and, and, doing it that way. But if you're someone who wants to give it a go and see for yourself, try. It definitely feels different around your gums when you do it. Like it feels more slimy, I guess you could say, which is pretty cool. Um, I think it does make your teeth a little whiter. So if that's something you want to do, give it a go. Um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Have you tried it? I have. I wasn't consistent with it because it did take a lot of time. Yeah. So I I did try it twice, and then I, I, like you said, I didn't do it enough, like, to notice a change, but I did try it twice, and I didn't notice anything, so I stopped doing it just because it took too much time, but I did try yeah. it. I heard right. the cleaning out your mouth and pulling out the toxins, so yeah. I, I, I did give it a go. Yeah, that, that, was, that was my issue with it. It just took a lot of time, and I, I'm doing other things in the morning, like taking a morning drink. I like to have a cup of coffee. I like to meditate. I like to go for a walk, and I just wasn't able to fit it in, you know? Yeah. I mean, I guess I could do it while I was doing the dishes, but sometimes I like to just not have to do all these things at once, but yeah, give it a shot, you know, let us know what you think. Uh, but yeah, go for it. It can't, it can't hurt, I'll put it that way. Exactly. Yeah. And that concludes all the questions from today. Awesome guys, well, hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, and also I put up a cool video on, on uh, wrist stretches yesterday, did you see that? That's Good amazing. Trauma. Like honestly, being on a computer, I because I've been trying to do planking, different things, and my wrists are so limited. So I've been looking for something like that. That was just yeah. Like, so I absolutely loved it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, for those who didn't see it, just just go back to the thread, or you can always go to the video section of our private Facebook group, and you'll you'll see it. But I want to start putting more videos on movement in there. That's sort of the thing that I think this might zone of genius. So the thing, thing I like the most as a physical therapist, but um, you know, our wrists, we're always flexing our, our wrists are always kind of caved in and we're always grabbing things with our fingers. So over time, our tissue adapts like these, the, the wrist muscles get shortened. Uh, the nerves that go through this carpal tunnel get closed off. This is why a lot of us have carpal tunnel syndrome. A lot of us are getting arthritis in, in the joints of our hands. We have so many bones and joints in our hands. It's very complex 
a part of our body, but it adapts in this position. And I would see this all the time with uh, when I worked with elderly patients, they would lose function over time. They would have a lot of pain, but their, their hands would get real arthritic and they, all of a sudden they wouldn't be able to pick things up anymore. And it's because it's, it's one of the most overlooked things in the, the health of our body. A lot of times we're thinking exercise with like burn more calories, exercise less. We're not paying attention to the quality of those movements. So I think of like wrist hygiene, spinal hygiene, all these different things I learned as a physical therapist, but the wrist is one of the most overlooked things. So I, I had a great video that shows you some ways that you can start extending your wrist and opening up your hands. Um, so definitely check that out. You can do it on your knees or on a desk, especially if you know if you're someone who's typing a lot, like everybody else is, or texting or doing whatever. It's really important to open up, open up your wrist health. So there's a comment that just came up said, "I started it today. Thank you. I I needed that." Awesome. So, yeah, <laughs> awesome. I love it too. So keep the videos coming. They're they're amazing. Awesome. Well, great. Um, well, thank you so much. And uh, if anybody has any questions about anything, just leave them here. You know, we're around all day. We always come back to these videos, and we get we get pinged when you do ask a question. So we'll we'll answer them as quickly as we can. Yes, thank you. Always a pleasure. I always learn so much. So thank you so for another great talk. <laughs> awesome. Well, enjoy the weather out in California. <laughs> we'll try. It's kind of rainy and overcast today. So I mean, we need it though. Like I said, I can't complain because it's been months since we've had rain, but Bring it on. Yeah. I need a little change, a little stay inside weather. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Everybody have a great week. All right, you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.